All right, let's go big picture here. And I mean really big picture. It's been a long time since Mexico's been in a World Cup and not gotten out of the group phase. You weren't born yet. I wasn't born yet. It was the 1970s, okay? Is this Mexico's worst World Cup ever? Well, in my lifetime, yes. Your yeah. lifetime, yes. But no, 1978 was very bad. Okay. They scored one goal. They lost every single game. They lost like 3-1 to Tunisia, I believe. Um, and, and, and that was a different World Cup setup. It was yes. groups. That was a 1978 where our colleague, uh, Campes, Mario Campes, Mario Campes yeah. um, ended up being But I mean, World we're Cup talking winner. in terms of soccer history. We're talking about ancient history. The ball wasn't brown, but it may as so, well have been. In the modern era, so what we, this is by far the so worst World Cup. So rephrase your question. Is this the worst World Cup of the modern era for Mexico? <laughs> Hands down. Yeah. And Tata Martino is the worst coach of the modern era mm. for Mexico. Hands down. I'd actually say he's probably the worst coach. coach excuse me. Uh, let me rephrase that. I would say Tata Martino is the worst coach in Mexican history because no other coach has had so much at his disposal and mm. done so little. You think this is the most talented generation of Mexican players? No. Then? No. Well, you're saying no other coach has had so much at his disposal. And done so little. Look, did, it, did another coach lose two finals in a summer? To the U.S.? No. To the U.S.? Did another coach, was another coach not able to beat yeah. the United States, no. Canada, and Costa Rica in the Azteca? The black marks on his record are many. Tata Martino and this Mexican national team are not the kings of CONCACAF. Mm. They are the kings of Central America and the Caribbean. That's really what it is for Tata Martino. That is his legacy with the Mexican national team. You talk about not being kings of CONCACAF, but there are niveles here, right? We're talking about Mexico's worst World Cup of the modern era. And they went 1-1-1 one, one, and one, and go out on goal difference. Yeah. Right? Two. And they made it to the World Cup. So okay. when you talk about everybody else in CONCACAF and you talk about worst World Cups in the modern area, you got teams like the U.S. finishing last in 98. Okay. You got teams like the U.S. not the qualifying question? in What's 2018. The, I'm, what, the point I'm making is that Mexico operates on another level than everybody else in CONCACAF. This is the worst World Cup okay. in the modern era, by far for Mexico. No, no discussion Why there. do they operate on a different level? Because the expectations are oh, higher. There we go. Why because are the, the expectations, expectations higher? higher? Because they're, they're a better footballing nation. They're a footballing nation. That's, that's the reality. They're, how many footballing nations are there really in CONCACAF? Three now. And Mexico, by far, is the largest footballing nation. Three now. I mean... There's, there are other footballing nations, but they're not footballing powers. We're not going to call Honduras, Costa Rica right now. We're not going to call those uh, footballing powers. All right. Uh, you mentioned Tata Martino is the worst manager ever for Mexico. Probably another point to your argument is also the, the guy they paid the most to to not get him out of the group phase, right? Sixth, sixth highest paid yeah. coach in this World Cup. Uh, what was his biggest mistake at this World Cup for you? And it can even go back to roster selection if you want to go back that far. I mean, it, it, it all comes down to how stubborn he is. Right. But what specifically? Well, Was it the me, tactics let, let against me get, Argentina? Let me get to it. So, so when I talk about him being stubborn, it's when World Cup qualifying is going on and your team is struggling. Certain players are struggling. His inability to select from the small pool that may be Liga Mekis for him, and I know he hated watching Liga Mekis, <laughs> and I could bring up names like Rocha, I could bring up names like Vigón, I could bring up names like... Uh, who else would you like me to bring up? Uh, Don Luis Chavez. Luis Chavez, well, whoever your case may be. But there are moments when they're in good, they're in a good level of play, and you can call them in, and it maybe pushes pushes out an Hector Herrera. It maybe pushes out a Gallardo. It maybe pushes out an Hector Moreno, mm. and you have competition. And if it doesn't push him out, it increases the level of these players. Yeah. So he doesn't do that. He loses all these games, okay? While he's losing all these games, he stays with this blacklist of players. Yeah. Chicharito Hernandez, blacklisted. He doesn't want anything to do with him. We can't score goals. Carlos Salcedo, blacklisted because he had an argument with an assistant coach in the Gold Cup final versus the USAC team. Uh, Layun, when he was in a good level, was part of that blacklist. Tecatio Corona, at one time, was part of that blacklist because Tata Martino got in a fight mm -hmm. with Sergio Conceição, the head coach of Porto. You can go back to all these different players that he just axed out. I don't want anything to do with these players. No more. And then the roster selection. Are you trying to tell me in a game like Argentina and this Saudi Arabia game, a player like Diego Linus yep. wouldn't be valuable That's to you? That's where I'm at with it. A player like Santiago Jimenez wouldn't be valuable mm -hmm. to you? Mm -hmm. Raul Jimenez can we, can can't we, move. Can we go back to the specific thing you said, the subs at 77? Raul, Charlie. Give me Santi Jimenez and Linus. And that's different. Or Chicharito, the all-time leading goal scorer in the history of the Mexican national team when you need a goal. Yeah. Who else would you rather have? It all falls on Tata Martino. 
everything, all of this. And Tata Martino now is in this mode. I, I can't wait to see what comes out of Tata Martino's mouth because he he is gonna go full blown, just open up the closet, hear the skeletons. Yep. I'll gonna tell you where all the dead bodies are at. The roster decisions are bad. I think we also have to point out that when we talk about his biggest mistakes, the game against Argentina, I think will live in Mexican soccer folklore and not in a good way for a very long time. In large part because Tata Martino is from Argentina, right? And, and that's people are never going to forget that. But the way that he betrayed Mexican soccer's DNA and put the team out to defend, and bottom line, we look at what happened today, right? You go out on goal difference. You go out on goal difference when you literally sacrificed what Mexico is to try and minimize goal difference. So your game plan was to limit the damage against Argentina, and you still... You still lost by multiple goals, which ends up being the difference that costs you here. How many, right? How many times have they played a line of five? Three or four. And in, in competitive games, I can only think of one. Costa Rica semifinal in CONCACAF Nations League. That's yeah. the only one. Yeah. How many times have they played that line of five with two forwards that aren't true forwards? Uh, never. 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 How many times have they Against played Argentina. that lineup? Never. How many times have those 11 played together? Probably never. Yeah. And at the biggest of moments, this is where you want to experiment. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, plenty of choices then to pick from when it comes to Tata Martino's biggest mistake.